Matthias Bombal with you. Warner Brothers brings us the 3D spectacle of San Andreas, presented in IMAX and in standard theaters across the nation. And it is pure, unadulterated disaster movie mayhem at its visual peak. Former wrestler Dwayne The Rock Johnson leads the cast as the kind of movie hero that will save you from anything. In the opening scenes, he sets the stage in the hills of the San Fernando Valley as a fire rescue helicopter pilot rescuing a hapless teen girl driver from a crevice where her car has plummeted because she had to check that text message instead of looking where she was going. Now that we've checked off the hero box for our lead, we find that he himself has a daughter, Blake, played by Alexandra Daddario, who is particularly tantalizing in 3D. Johnson finds out that his wife, played by Carla Gugino, is moving in with a wealthy San Francisco developer and will be filing divorce papers. This developer, played by Ion Grafud, is the smarmy type, and you'll dislike him from the start. He offers to fly Blake to San Francisco since he must have a meeting in a new building there. Whilst waiting there, Blake meets a young Brit, played by Hugo Johnstone Burt, who is to be interviewed for a job. He's accompanied by his much younger brother, played by Art Parkinson. Now, have you got all that? Concurrently, in Nevada, some Cal Poly earthquake professors are studying what may be a new fault line that has been somewhat active in the tremor department. Here, we see Will Yun Lee and Paul Giamatti feeling for vibrations on the Hoover Dam. Lawrence, it's incredible. This is the third mini-quake since we've been here. And the magnetic pulse rate has increased before each one of them. That was a 2.2. Our model's predictive. <laughs> the right man, finally. <laughs> yep, we sure did. <laughs> What's wrong? The pulse rates are spiking again. They're huge. Are you serious? Jim? I'm about to have a major quake. It jumped to a 7.1! Jesus, Kim, get the hell out of there! Everybody get off the dam! Damn, indeed. The earth trembles unforgivably then in Los Angeles and like a runaway train heads to the city by the bay known for its earthquake past. Our smarmy San Francisco developer had finished his meeting and is escorting Blake to her destination, but before they can get out of the garage, the expected happens. As all hell breaks loose, his true colors are revealed, but our strapping young Brit and his younger brother team up with Blake and fight to survive. What's that noise? Poor city. 
So what, you may ask, has our hero been up to? Fighting to reach his own daughter, of course, assisted by his soon-to-be, or not-to-be, ex-wife as they face a tsunami in the bay on their way to find her. Ray? I see it! Hold on! We gotta get over it before it crests! Have no fear, if anyone may save the day, it'll be The Rock. This movie is big, 3D IMAX spectacle at its best, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So much better than epic IMAX dystopian futures or disgusting-looking aliens and Geiger-like machinery. This is pure make-believe at its best, and that make-believe of the disaster genre is so fun because you know folks and things aren't really being destroyed. I view this with the childlike excitement of the Godzilla movies, eagerly awaiting the smashing of buildings and Mother Nature fighting back. That poor Golden Gate Bridge doesn't stand a chance. It's been the favorite target for destruction in the movies since 1955's It Came From Beneath the Sea. Later on, it was maimed in Superman the Movie. Star Trek Deep Space Nine The Core 10.5 10.5 X-Men The Last Stand Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus and Monsters vs. Aliens just to name a few. Of course, the sense around sound of 1974's Earthquake handled the subject of earthquake movies well for its generation, but the classic 1936 Metro Goldwyn Mayer feature San Francisco, which won an Oscar for its sound recording, has a special place in my heart for its telling of the 1906 event with Clark Gable and Jeanette MacDonald. Plus, it gave birth to that great anthem for the city by the bay, San Francisco, written by Walter Yurman and Bronislaw Caper. For today, however, the great special effects of San Andreas lead the way for big-screen disaster fun, which you really should see in IMAX. The movie was directed by Brad Payton. The 3D is not over the top and does not distract from the hell and fury of Mother Nature at her angriest. The only thing missing was Jeanette MacDonald. The MPAA has given this a PG-13 rating. This is your pal, Matthias Bombell, bidding you a fond farewell. Thank you.